My name is Terry Swears. I'm a member of the Millennium Software Support Team. This quick start video is designed to help you get up and running with Atrex as quickly as possible and shows you the bare minimum of what is needed to get started. This video assumes that you have installed and started Atrex, but have not yet created any data. So let's get started with your company information and the general Atrex settings. Click on the Options menu, Company Setup and Customization, and then Company Information and Settings. First tab allows you to enter your company name, address, phone number. There are also a couple additional optional header fields which allow you to put information such as your website or a company slogan that will also print at the top of the transactions. The Options tab of the Atrex setup allows you to set various options that will control how Atrex operates. The most commonly used options are set automatically, but you can change them as you choose. Pressing F1 will get you help for this window, and clicking on each of the options in the help will give you additional information about what each option does. Context sensitive help is available throughout the Atrex program by pressing F1. The Defaults tab allows you to set some of the default values used throughout the package, such as the history search periods and the number of printed copies for different transaction types. When you're done making changes, click the OK button at the bottom to save them. Remember, you can always come back and change these again later. Most users will need at least one tax category so that you can collect the appropriate sales tax. To set up your tax categories, select Options, Company Information and Settings, look up Selections, and then Tax Categories. Click the plus button to insert a new category. Type in the name of this tax category, set the tax rate, and then click the green check button to save the entry. Click the set default button to make this the default tax category. To create a tax exempt tax category, click the plus button again, enter exempt for the name, check the tax exempt option, and then click the check button to save the entry. Let's create a couple of products to sell, test code 1 and test code 2. Select New from the inventory menu. We'll create test code 1 first. For now, just enter the description and the sale price. While we're not going to use them right now, you can maintain the list of categories, manufacturers, and locations using the function menu in the upper left hand corner of this window. Now let's create test code 2. Again, we're just going to enter a description and price. If you make a mistake when creating a stock code, such as forgetting the space before the 2 in test code 2 like I did, you can rename a stock code using the rename function on the inventory menu. Select or enter the incorrect code, enter the correct code, and then confirm the rename. The stock code and all of its references will be updated. Let's take a look at the purchase order functions in Atrex, which allow you to place orders for products with your suppliers and keep track of what's already been ordered. First, we'll need to create a vendor to work with. Select the Vendor New function from the main Atrex menu and enter a code that represents the vendor you are creating. When presented with the Vendor Information window, there are a lot of fields available for you to use, but the only field required is the vendor name. Once you have entered all the information you want, click the OK button to save the vendor. Now let's create a PO. Select PO New from the main Atrex menu. You will be prompted for a vendor code to use for this PO. You can enter the code directly or click the search button and select from a list. If you don't see the vendor you want, you can click the New button on this window to create a new vendor. In this case, we'll select the vendor we just created. Once the PO creation window is displayed, you'll be prompted to enter the first stock code for the PO. 
Let's add both of the test codes that we created earlier, each with an order quantity of 10, and a unique price. After all the items have been entered, click the OK button to save the PO. After saving the PO, you are given the opportunity to print the PO. Using the output destination window, you can send it to a printer, email it as a PDF, or print it to the screen. If you don't want to print it at all, just click the cancel button. For right now, let's just send it to the screen. When the items arrive from the supplier, you can put them into your inventory using the PO receiving function. Select PO, Receive from the main Atrix menu, and then select the PO that you want to receive. You can handle each item individually by either double-clicking on an item or highlighting an item and clicking the Receive button. Enter the quantity received and adjust the cost if needed. If all of the items on the PO were shipped, you can quickly receive all of the remaining quantity of each item by clicking on the Receive All button. When all the items have been handled, click the OK button. This window gives you access to several optional post-receiving functions specific to the current receiving session, such as printing a receiving list or product labels. After you've finished using the functions that you want, click the OK button to complete the receiving session. We've looked at how to create products and how to get them into our inventory, so now let's look at how to invoice them out. To start an invoice, select Sales Invoice from the main Atrix menu. The Customer Selection Entry window gives you multiple ways to search for a customer, but for now let's just click on the Search button. As the customer that we want to sell to has not purchased from us before, we are going to click the New button. You can enter as much or as little information for the customer as you wish, but you must enter either a last name or a company name. Click OK when you are ready to proceed with the invoice. After selecting the customer, the invoice creation window is displayed with the general tab selected. This tab allows you to enter information specific to this invoice, such as the salesperson or reference the customer's purchase order number. As we did not specify the tax category on the customer that we created, you will notice that the invoice is set to the default tax category that we set up earlier in Atrix. Click on the OK button or the Line Items tab. This will prompt you for the first item. Let's add the test code 1 item that we created earlier. The item will be added to the invoice with the default sales price and a quantity of 1. Change these values as needed and then click the OK button. As this is the only item we are adding to the invoice, click on the Cancel button when prompted for the next code. Then click the OK button. The Payment Information window allows you to specify how the invoice is paid. If the customer is going to pay at a later time, you can leave the invoice with a balance and that balance amount will be put on their account. For this example, we're going to pay it with a good old fashioned check, complete the invoice, and then print it to screen. When you don't need to associate an invoice with a specific customer, such as a walk-in cash sale, you can use the Rapid Invoice function. Select Sales Rapid Invoice from the main menu to start a Rapid Invoice. A Rapid Invoice differs from a regular invoice in that it bypasses the General tab and cannot be saved with a balance. If the payment amount entered is greater than the invoice total, the excess amount will be given back to the customer as change returned. For your daily operations, there are a few administrative reports and tasks that will help you with your business. The first is the Revenue Report, accessible from the main menu by selecting Reports, Receivables, Revenue. This report will show you how much of each payment type you received during the reported date range. If you are entering credit card detail information in Atrix, it will also show you the breakdown of each card type. 
The daily totals report, accessible from the main menu by selecting reports, sales, daily totals, will give you a very high level overview of your daily sales and profitability. A sales overview report, accessible from the main menu by selecting reports, sales, overview sales, will give you a transaction level detail about the sales in the reported date range. While probably not a report that you will run on a daily basis, you can run a sales tax report from Reports, Sales, Tax Report to show the taxable sales and what tax was collected, broken down by tax category, for the specified date range. Something you should definitely be doing on a daily basis is making a backup of your data. To make a backup, select Options, Backup Restore, Backup from the main Atrix menu. Click the Select File button to specify where to save the backup. In this case, it's being saved to a removable USB drive that can be taken off-site. Click OK to begin making the backup. And that brings us to the end of the Atrex Quick Start video. As I mentioned before, this video shows only the bare minimum required to get started with Atrex. You can get additional information on using Atrex from the Atrex User's Guide, available from the Help menu inside of Atrex. Thank you for watching.